During Washington's presidency, an interesting, an interesting uh, event started to happen, and that's the growth of political parties. So during his presidency, people started to become aware that there were a couple of different ways to run this country. And so when, when these groups got together, they would say, well, I like maybe this kind of law. I support taxing those whiskey uh, producers out west. And so those people that supported that tax, they would get together and work together. And the people that opposed that tax, they would get together and work together. And so naturally, just like all human beings, um, people started to group together based on their wants, their desires for the government and for the direction of the country. So um, officially, we say that political parties began in 1792. And a political party is a group organized to promote specific political goals and support candidates for office. Political parties under Washington developed because people did not agree on what the government could do or how much power it should have. Remember, this was a brand new constitution, and people didn't know exactly how to interpret every little line. It would take years and years and centuries even to um, figure that out. And even today, we haven't figured that out. So the two sides were basically between Thomas Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton. Now, Jefferson believed that Alexander Hamilton was making the government way too powerful. Uh, he and James Madison formed the Democratic Republican Party. And the party was supported mainly by farmers, and they believed that the government should be kept small and that it should follow the Constitution word for word, or what we call a strict interpretation. So a very limited amount of government intrusion in people's lives and a very limited amount of power for the government. Now, Alexander Hamilton, on the other hand, he supported a strong national government. And so he and John Adams created the Federalist Party. This party was supported by businesses and manufacturing people in the East. They favored a loose interpretation of the Constitution. So if you remember our whole talk about the uh, elastic clause, um, a loose interpretation of the Constitution, according to the Federalists, might look like um, the fact that the, con the Congress could make all kinds of laws. They could make that bank for the United States, even though the United States Bank is not in the Constitution. Um, they could make any kind of taxes that they want. They could tax those uh, the whiskey out west. But the Democratic Republican Party, they wanted a strict interpretation of the Constitution. And so the uh, Bank of the United States, according to Jefferson, was not legal. It's nowhere in the Constitution, so it shouldn't exist. So um, the two parties began because of arguments about who, about how to read the Constitution. Now Washington, he remained popular with both parties because he didn't even become involved in either of the parties. Um, and so in 1792, he was re-elected as president. I believe that this is in your packet. It just shows the two differences, or well, many differences between the two parties. So take a moment, you can hit the pause button, and uh, just look at these two tables. And you need to understand the major differences between the Federalists and the Democratic Republicans. On the international scene, there were problems between France, or problems between the United States and France and Britain during Washington's second term. Um, during his second term, the French had a revolution. In 1789, the French Revolution broke out, and many, many Americans supported the revolution because the revolution was between the lower and middle classes revolting against the nobility and the rulers of France. And that reminded a lot of Americans of the American Revolution. But soon, many Americans stopped supporting the French because the French got crazy. They started being violent with their people. They were chopping people's heads off with guillotines. Um, there was a lot of chaos. Women and children were suffering. Innocents were be innocent people were being abused. It was no good. Uh, it was not what the American Revolution m looked like. So, um, in 1793, the U.S. government issued the Neutrality Proclamation. And it was a way to stay out of any European wars 
that might be started because of the French Revolution. And there were many wars because of the French Revolution. There was a war in Austria, in England, and um, all over Europe. Okay, this document declared that the U.S. would remain neutral in any war. And the U.S. would continue to trade with all nations of Europe, regardless of warfare. So, this kind of put the U.S. in a funny situation, because if... France was fighting England, England was fighting France, and the United States is trading with both. Well, we're not going to, you just can't please both sides. So England would see the United States as an enemy for trading with France, and France would see the United States as an enemy for trading with England. Uh, the word neutral means to not take a side. So because of the neutrality proclamation, uh, British ships, British and French for that matter, started seizing American ships and sailors. And so if a ship was going to France from the United States, the British would take the ship, take the crew, take the cargo, and it would all become British. And vice versa, if the French captured an American ship headed for England, they would do the same. Take it and bring it to, to France. Now this made the, Fran or the Americans extremely angry and uh, it's illegal, so the Americans had to do something about it. This word, that word to put soldiers into, uh, or to put sailors into work for another country is called impressed, and that's the practice by the British, and the French just doesn't say it here, but the practice by the British of forcing American sailors to serve in the British Navy, and that is going to be a practice that causes all kinds of chaos in British-American relations. Another problem that, the, that Washington dealt with was Britain maintaining forts on the American borders. Now, after the American Revolution, the British were supposed to move their, their forts out of the West, but they never did. And so they stayed out West. They encouraged the Native Americans to fight against the Americans. And all the while, they just did not follow the Treaty of Paris that was signed after the American Revolution. So American tribes were fighting with the American Native American tribes were fighting with the Americans, and it took a very large battle at uh, the Battle of Fallen Timbers in 1794 to end most of that fighting. Uh, during the presidency of Washington, fighting had taken place between Native Americans and Americans in the Northwest Territory. So Washington sent General Anthony Wayne into the territory to stop the Native Americans. Um, at the Battle of Fallen Timbers, about 2,000 Native Americans were defeated, and then the Native American tribes of the Shawnee, Ottawa, and Chippewa, who lost the battle, were forced to sign the Treaty of Greenville. Under this treaty, they agreed to give up their land and move westward. So this internal struggle against the Native Americans was caused by an external force, by the British telling the Native Americans to attack us.